Hi all. So here we are with a small a question and answer session with our Professor Anandi, proficient in artificial intelligence and machine learning with an experience of about 13 years. This Q&A session is actually a must watch for all the students who will always be thinking like why should I learn this or why should I do this. This Q&A has actually the so called curious questions which my students had been repeatedly asking me for quite a long time. So as you, I'm also excited to hear it from ma'am. So with no further delay, let's dive into the Q&A session. The first and foremost question is, ma'am, be it CS students or non-CS students, they keep me asking like why programming is important or why should they learn programming? What do you feel is a motivating force behind learning programming? Okay, thank you Manju. To start with, uh, why someone should learn programming? Uh, everyone should learn programming uh, which helps them how to think. As uh, Steve Jobs uh, famously remarked, uh, to work in this 21st century and to discover the secrets of the universe, uh, we should learn the basic programming steps. Uh, there should be always some motivation to do something. Uh, which motivates the students to learn programming skills? Uh, are they really looking for an uh, placements with IRLPA? Or are they really interested to start their own firm to become an entrepreneur? Or, uh, or do they want to do freelancing uh, to uh, make stuff for others? Or uh, they are really passionate uh, to in learn. programming? So, thank you ma'am. So that was a beautiful insight. So why people have to learn programming depends on uh, their requirement. Like if they wanted to get a high package or if they wanted to become an entrepreneur or if they are passionate to know the inner workings of the computer. Learning programming is a must. Yeah. So the second question I have here is ma'am, uh, which programming language do you think is the fastest growing and which programming language is on demand by the employees right now ma'am? The fastest growing and uh, more uh, on-demand programming uh, depends upon the domain and the industry needs. For full stack development, uh, the students can start with uh, HTML, CSS, uh, JavaScript and tech stack like uh, Merl and Domain. Uh, in the realm of uh, data science, they can always go with uh, Python since uh, it has uh, versatile uh, libraries. So it supports uh, machine learning and uh, artificial intelligence. So depends upon the demand and industry needs, if they develop their skills, it's always there is a way to reach the higher rights. Yeah, thank you ma'am. So the need or the requirement actually depends upon the role for which the employers are hiring in. So if you if you wanted to look for full stack, you have to be proficient with Java and Mern stack what ma'am told. Or if you wanted to get in the data science, then you will have to be proficient in Python as ma'am said. Thank you ma'am. So the next question is, ma'am, so years ago the curriculum was like initially I'll be learning C programming and then I'll be learning either C++ or Java and then I'll be learning Python. So if you are interested, you will be learning Python. But right now, uh, the curriculum has changed. Like, do you still feel that learning C programming is mandatory for us to go with Python or Java? Uh, it is not mandatory to learn C to understand uh, Python or Java. Uh, but it, it is helpful uh, if you know C to understand the, the languages. Uh, C starts with, uh, we'll start with scratch. So we'll start understanding the memory and other uh, functionings. Uh, but uh, when when we take uh, Java or Python, uh, it has uh, it supports uh, I mean object oriented programming uh, where uh, everywhere today in uh, development uh, object oriented programming is used everywhere. Uh, in the current scenario, uh, the Java and Python has a lot of libraries uh, uh, which helps uh, to I mean develop in a faster space. Uh, when compared to C, uh, if you are really interested to know about uh, the uh, hardware and the system uh, related stuff, so you can go with uh, C. Uh, thank you ma'am. So that here it is clear that a C isn't a mandatory language you will have to learn. Say for example, if you wanted to have a better understanding or a deeper understanding of a lower level stuff, then you can uh, start from scratch that is your C programming. Or if you have an ability to directly learn the OOPS concept, you can directly move on to Java or Python. Yeah. So the next question is, after learning the concepts ma'am, after learning the basic concepts, how do I gain expertise in the same? Uh, to master the basics, uh, one should be good at fundamentals. Uh, you can always uh, look for tutorials and uh, current uh, trending materials uh, to update your fundamentals. Uh, once you are done with the uh, basics, uh, you can uh, start practicing. Uh, uh, 
don't directly jump into higher level complex problems you can always start with the simpler questions uh, problems and then you can move on to the gradually you can move on to the next level seek uh, help when needed uh, from uh, communities and uh, mentors uh, you can always apply your knowledge uh, by taking uh, daily quizzes and you can practice in competitive platforms uh, thereby you can uh, improve your uh, problem solving skills uh, once you are done once you are confident enough uh, you can start building your uh, projects by applying all the concepts you have learned uh, uh, so far yeah so thank you ma'am so if you wanted to always um, be at the top of the hill then you will have to climb the ladder uh, from the first step so as ma'am told it will be easier if you start uh, practicing things from the lower level and, and then if you gradually move on to the higher levels so thank you ma'am so the next question is it's quite interesting and um, student always ask me that i wanted to become a super duper coder i don't know from where i should begin or what i should do in my four years of my undergraduate program uh, to become a super duper coder uh, in your undergraduate uh, in the first year start with the uh, basics uh, either you can start with uh, java or uh, python kind of programming uh, in the year 2 uh, you can uh, expertise in your interest whether you can go with uh, web development or uh, ai uh, as you enter your final year uh, uh, you focus on uh, networking uh, like uh, professional networking you can build your profile and can you can concentrate on your portfolio and uh, approaching the industries through linkedin kind yeah. of stuff yeah so thank you ma'am that was great so to become a super duper coder you will need a good fundamental you should be strong in your basic concepts and you need a very good coding profiles and you need very good project portfolios which can, which will actually help you to become what you desire so the next question is a universal problem i guess so ma'am uh, what students actually tell me is they learn uh, c programming in the first semester data structures in the second semester dbms python java in the subsequent semesters so what they feel is when they come in for the placements during their fifth semester or sixth semester they forget everything what they learned uh, in the earlier semesters so the problem is that they forget everything what they learned they have to redo everything so what's your uh, take on that ma'am okay fine uh, review and refresh uh, helps a lot uh, you can always uh, revisit the concepts learned and then uh, practice makes uh, permanent uh, uh, there are a lot of uh, competitive platforms where the students can go and uh, practice their uh, coding uh, like uh, hackerang uh, lead code and uh, codechef you can always start with the basic programs and you can move to the gradually move to the next level uh, please never ever give up uh, initially it uh, seems to be tough but uh, you keep on practicing it makes uh, easy to crack the uh, problem solving stuff uh, then uh, the projects so you the students can build their knowledge uh, by developing a projects uh, where they can apply all the concepts they have learned and then the community uh, where they can learn uh, uh, steps by asking questions and uh, peer learning group yeah thank you ma'am that was wonderful so practice is that one secret mantra which will actually help you to keep your knowledge alive so practice in coding platforms like lead code hacker rank or hacker earth or build projects up uh, get your project portfolios well done so that will keep your knowledge alive so the next question is uh, related to the important paper data structures so ma'am uh, students keep asking me uh, to be a, uh, to be into a software developer role should i need to learn data structure and why should i learn data structure a good question manju uh, data structure helps uh, to write code in more efficient and optimized way uh, it helps in managing your memory and uh, your space too so it is a whole bunch of a toolkit for the developers so when we uh, when we take a binary search tree which provides a logarithmic time when compared to a linear search of an sorted uh, array and uh, hash table which uh, gives a, a better look up when compared to a normal uh, uh, kind of list uh, it's like uh, finding the uh, phone book instantly uh, instead of looking uh, or scrolling throughout all the pages 
Uh, thank you, ma'am. So to to add on to ma'am's examples, I would also like to add on uh, graphs, which actually helps in establishing the relations between the social media networks. So data structures is basically the programmer's toolkit. If you wanted to become a super duper coder, then learning data structure is always mandatory. Uh, so the next question is, uh, ma'am, uh, say I have completed my undergraduate program and I wanted to become a full stack developer in my career. So what are all the key uh, things which I have to focus on? Uh, we can divide this into two two parts. Uh, one is your front end, and another one is your back end. Uh, the front end is the client side, uh, client side, and your back end is your server side. So to start with the client side, uh, uh, we can start with HTML and CSS, uh, which are the building blocks of the web page. Uh, HTML take care of your uh, content and your uh, CSS uh, take care of your uh, visual presentations. And then your JavaScript uh, which provides uh, dynamic nature and uh, interactivity to your web pages. Uh, you can go with uh, frameworks or libraries like uh, React, Angular or Vue.js. And then comes your backend. Uh, that is uh, server-side programming languages. You can start, uh, uh, you can start either with uh, Python uh, which uh, supports uh, Flask and uh, Django or uh, Java, uh, Spring Boot. Uh, finally comes your database. Uh, you can go with uh, uh, SQL database or kind of a no SQL. Uh, SQL always uh, starts with, um, I mean, MySQL or Postgres SQL. For no SQL, uh, you can go with the MongoDB or uh, Cassandra type of database. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so for you to become a full stack developer, you will obviously have to be master of trades like uh, client side programming as well as your server side programming. So thank you, ma'am. Thank you for patiently being here and answering all my questions. Thank you. So on a whole, so for you to become a, a good programmer, a super duper coder, you will always have to master your fundamentals. You will have to be very strong in all your core concepts. Then try attending all the coding challenges which you get online. Try solving your code profile problems as well as your hacker, ad, hacker rank problems. Try building some good project portfolios which will actually help you to stand out from the crowd. As well, while you are solving problems, don't keep your definition of done to be low. Always aim for a high definition of 10 you will always stand out from the crowd so that's for today thank you thank you